Intelligence just released the top 10 most stressful jobs in 2017. For the second year in a row, in the same order, here are the top five. Number one, military personnel. Number two, firefighters. Number three, um, airline pilots. Number four, police officers. And number five, meeting and event professionals. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Really? Yes, those that hire you are actually in a very stressful job. Well, how is that possible? How can you actually tell, especially when working with you? Well, let me put it this way. As the female version of the comedian Jeff Foxworthy in his redneck style, I'm sure you can relate. And if so, please join in with me. If you have a potential client that is actually very excited to hire you, but take 10 years to decide, they might be a meeting professional. <laughs> if you get a twitch in your eye when you hear the word exposure, they might be a meeting professional. If you actually have been required to hand in your slides or told to tweet 20 times, they might be a meeting professional. And if you actually ask, What's your budget? They say, budget? I have no stinking budget. They might be a meeting professional. And of all, let's say you want to show up expecting to present from the stage, but you are actually told, wouldn't it be fun <laughs> for you to stand on top of a fake floating iceberg in the middle of a pool with plastic sharks swimming around you? They might be a meeting professional. <laughs> well, actually, I would do that. I travel with a wetsuit. And I think, Lou, you travel with a wetsuit too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, seriously, we might joke about those that actually hire us, but here's the truth. You are just one piece of a very fast-moving puzzle. And because of this, the meetings world and the speaking world still have a gap, a gap that exists. And that gap can be as large as what speakers say they make and what they really make. <laughs> so what does this all mean to you? Well, I know it's a cliche to start out with a quote for a program, but this sets the stage and answers that question. And it's from the legendary Jack Welsh. He says, if you don't have a competitive edge, don't compete. And this is so true in business today, especially our business where we have the power to actually do what we can to help our audiences change their lives. And that also includes those that hire you. So how do you find that competitive edge? How do you actually stand out? Well, especially in a commodity, commodity of all these speakers, trainers, coaches, bureaus, and more, you have to get to know the meetings world. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you in a snapshot, probably a, a, a Red Bull double espresso and steroids format, five areas that I see in the, speaking, uh, in the meetings world where I've been hanging for the last 27 years. And if followed and understood, I can guarantee you it will enhance your business once and for all. Does this sound good? Are you okay with this? Yeah. Good. But what are some of the things that you need to know as well is something as simple as in the United States alone, there are over 11 million meetings per day, per day. Globally, 85 million. And they said by the end of 2017, that number will be well into a billion. So there's a lot of meetings, a lot of business for each and every one of us. And, and that's not counting just their internal meetings. We're talking about where they need your services. This is going on every single day. So what, um, where are they? Well, right now, in 2015 and also 2016, the number one spot is North, Northern Africa right now. I know a lot of speakers that go to Africa. It is booming. A lot of the business is driven by Egypt over to Africa, and now Africa is just booming. They are building more upscale hotels and convention centers, and if you want to market or target an, an, an area like this, Africa is the way to go. Secondly is Europe. Europe is still going strong, even though they've had some security issues there. And then you've got North America as well. Now, where the groups are going, right now Europe is going to is ahead of Africa, but still Africa is still moving very, very fast. And Canada and Mexico are right behind it. Now the US economists are talking about the inbound travel for the travel index for the US. 
um, is slower than usual. So that's why Canada and Mexico are up there very high. Um, but yeah, it might be slow, and I know a lot of people might think that it's the travel ban or the restrictions. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the strong dollar and the weak econ global economy. Um, and right now, we're about 3.7% ahead of last year of inbound travel, international travel. So really, it's not that slow. So right now, Europe is, is very, very strong, where a lot of Americans, a lot of uh, the Asian area is going to Europe. So what's happening is people are just kind of going everywhere right now. So, because, and we know the effects of this administration, don't we, more than ever? But the meetings industry is on board when it comes to security. They, would, they want their, their participants to be secure. So they're on board with this than ever before. I know a lot of conversations and topics are out there, um, but the focus needs to be there. I mean, I'm from Arizona, and our focus is the wall. <laughs> we want, it, we want the, the wall to be built or whatever, but it uh, seems as though the, uh, there's a lot of expense, and we don't know how it's going to be built. But being a meeting professional, I'm thinking, pipe and drape. How easy can that be? Right? It's the easiest way. So, immigration is not a hot topic for the meetings industry, surprisingly. But what is, is terrorism, uh, health issues. I mean, there's a lot of things that meeting and event professionals have on their mind. Um, because think about this, this is not their first act going even through all of this. But I can go back as far as 1981 when HIV disease, uh, 2002 SCARS, 2007 Zika still going on, 2009 when America was told not to go to Las Vegas, the city that never sleeps, slept. 2010, you got AIG scandal. I mean, it's just snowballing one after another. I mean, this is not their first rodeo at all, what's going on here today. As a matter of fact, the National Rodeo Association just had their meeting, and their attendance went down. And let me tell you, that wasn't their first. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so what are they doing? What are the meeting and event professionals doing? They're educating themselves. They're getting as much security information as possible. They're screening their attendees. I mean, things are happening, so be prepared when they are on that. But what can you do on your part? There's things that you can do. For example, there's an emergency action checklist that can be provided on your business card. If you put checklists behind it, I will send you mine. It's short and sweet. When you come on property, you need to know that well, especially your room. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I want everybody to close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, out loud, tell me how many exit rooms are in the uh, exit doors in this room? <laughs> All right, keep your eyes closed. How many windows are in this room? All right, I just want to make sure you're awake. All right, where is the storage door? <laughs> Front left, okay. All right, open your eyes. All right, actually, there is only one exit door. That's the door. This, these two doors go to the next room. This is the back of the house room. You'll never get the attendees out there. And the storage room is around there. There's only one door. Even if there's windows, depending on how many levels there are. You know, there's three levels here. If there's bars on it, can it open? You need to know these things and have a checklist for it. Um, the client risk management plan, ask your client, do they have a risk management plan that you need to know about as well? Um, this one does. The, there is an actual director of meetings uh, security here. And I talked to him prior to to get to know what the assembly points are here. And to know that there's only one house phone, and if you need them, you dial 2-2. And if you need the attendees to go out, the participants to go out the door, there's human arrows ready to direct people different ways. And this is important for you to know because I was actually at a, uh, I think the Biltmore in Phoenix, watching a speaker present. And as she held her microphone, there was, uh, the fire alarm went off. She froze. You're the one with the microphone. Take responsibility. Know what to say and do. Okay? The meeting professional had to come from the back of the room to the podium and then direct everybody. You learn how to do that instead. 